What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football channel. As always, it's your boy, Nick. We're gonna get into another mock draft. Today's mock draft is gonna be zero wide receiver. We did the zero running back strategy mock draft a couple, I think it was like two weeks ago. I'll link it on the screen right now if you wanna go check that out. Today, we're gonna flip it and go zero wide receiver. I kind of explained in the last video what that means. You know, it got really, really hyped up last year, the whole zero running back theory, because people thought, you know, running backs were more fragile, their bust rate was much higher, and the top wide receivers are much safer. And, you know, it, it just so happened to be like an elite year for wide receivers the year before, a really bad year for the running backs, especially the like the guys in the top five. I think like four out of the top five busted. Wide receivers just ended up at the top of the rankings when the year was over in 2015. So last year, you know, people were going very, very wide receiver heavy. And then fantasy football was like, yeah, let me just take your shit real quick on your chest. And we're going to make running backs a thing again. So if there's anything I've learned over my years of playing fantasy football, it's that for the most part, things always come back down to the norm. Last year, we saw running backs dominate with, you know, David Johnson, Le'Veon Bell, Zeke Elliott, even Blunt with 18 touchdowns. We saw an unprecedented, unprecedented number of touchdowns at the running back position, as well as just like success overall. We we haven't seen a trio of running backs like that in fantasy in a long, long time. But the whole thing behind the zero theory is, you know, you go without picking that position. If you're going zero wide receiver, you, you won't go with a wide receiver in the first, usually it's like three or four rounds. You stack up your running back. And then after that, you look for mid to late round guys that can fill out the roster. And it's kind of like your way of zigging while everyone else in the draft is zagging so that, you know, you can hit value. I think this is actually going to work out really well, the zero wide receiver theory. I think when it hits like round six to seven, there's a lot, lot, lot more depth and value at the wide receiver position. There's a lot of dudes in like the middle rounds that I think have potential to to break out or at least have really, really solid floors. But when you get to that kind of spot in drafts for running backs, it's, it's really, really questionable dudes. It's the same spots that you would be picking dudes like Jameson Crowder and Willie Sneed. You're kind of choosing between like Spencer Wares, the CJ Andersons, who I, who I like both of this year, but they obviously have much lower floors than guys like Sneed and, and Crowder. If you get those elite running backs and then you get wide receivers in the middle rounds with really solid floors, the overall look of your team might be really, really nice. If I'm doing zero wide receiver and I pick my first two rounds and somehow like Julio Jones drops to pick 20, I'm not going to be like, you know what? Can't take him. Zero wide receiver. Got to stick to my guns. Like yeah, there's obviously a, uh, a line that needs to be drawn when you're talking about this, but we're going to pick from the ninth overall spot. It was just random. That's how I filled it in. It's Yahoo. And I'll be back with you when, when the draft starts. I got to go pee. I got to go grab a monster. I got to go make some food, some chicken fingers or some shit. Alright, so we're off. So as I usually explain in these mock draft videos, Yahoo sets it up so it's quarterback, three wides, running back, tight end. In my league, my big money league, it's quarterback, two wide receivers, two running backs, a tight end, and then two flexes. So you could start anywhere from four running backs to four wide receivers, three tight ends or whatever. So that's kind of how I do these drafts when I draft. And because most people don't play these standard Yahoo settings of three wide receivers, two running backs. So I think most people can most people have a flex in their league, and I don't know why Yahoo doesn't like custom. I always say this, like so much money goes into Yahoo Fantasy. Like it's probably one of their biggest drivers to their website, and they still offer like nothing customizable with these mock drafts. Their rankings are shitty. It's really unbelievable, actually. I don't know why I'm getting pissed, but okay. Top three running backs off the board. I, I like the end of the uh, first round if you're if you're doing a zero wide receiver, because of course, like the middle picks are filled with these wide receivers, and then you have your pick of like five or six tier two running backs, and I think. Almost all of them. Wow, Jordan Howard's all the way at the 10 spot, huh? If I had my selection out of this tier, Devonta Freeman is really my favorite one in this in this mix. Him and him and Melvin Gordon are like 1A, 1B for me. And then Jay Ajayi and DeMarco Murray are also like 1A, 1B. I know they're both like suffering with minor injuries, but I'm going to discount those because there's like a month before the season starts. And I think they'll be fine by the time that rolls around. Wow, they have Leonard Fournette all the way up here. They are really fucking around with these rankings. They've Gronk at 30, Gillisley at 32. Get the fudge out of here. So it looks like I'm going to have basically my pick of running backs because McCoy went off the board early. So did Mike Evans. All right. So this is what I mean. Like in a real draft, I wouldn't let Julio slide past me here. But since we're doing zero wide receivers, 
I'm going to go with Devonta Freeman. Top six running back the last two fantasy seasons. There's no reason that should change. 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns in both seasons. He is their clear workhorse, even with Tevin Coleman there. Coleman had a, a ridiculous season last year. His efficiency numbers were like, they were actually historic. His yards per reception was the highest total, I think, since like, it was like 1978 or something for a running back. So he's going to come back down to earth. I would also pick AJ Green here, but damn it. I should like, if this wasn't zero wide receiver, I have Julio and AJ Green as my, as my guys. But my next favorite running back off the board is definitely DeMarco. When it comes to these guys that are injured, DeMarco, slight hamstring injury. Uh, they said his day to day. So I'm not taking too much into consideration. Jay Ajayi, I still love him. I, I explained this on one of the outlooks that I just posted. So if something happens over like the next month or so before the season starts, that's like game changing to a team that changes the team outlook overall. Like say, you know, like Ryan Tannehill, for instance, is out for the season. I'm going to go onto that team outlook and I'm going to post a comment on the, uh, on the video. And I could, as like the creator, I could pin a comment to the top of it. So that's the first comment in the comment section. And that's what I'll do. Like if Tannehill's out for the year, I'll go down, I'll write a paragraph, kind of like a, a quick write-up of how I think it, it affects, you know, the running back and, and his weapons and stuff. It'll something quick just to kind of keep you guys in the loop because obviously like the team outlooks I'm, I'm making a month, two months before the season starts. I want to make sure I stay on top of that stuff for you. So when, you know, Tannehill finally gets his ruling, I'll go onto the video and I'll say, hey, looks like Kaepernick's or, you know, Jay Cutler is going to be the quarterback. This is how I think it affects Jarvis Landry, Devontae Parker, Jay Ajayi. Do I move them up? Do I move them down? So big news breaks. I'm going to try to do that as soon as possible within the news breaking. So you don't have to like come to the video and ask questions about, oh, what do you think about this, that? I should already have it posted and pinned to the top comment. And then you guys can, you know, interject and say what you think will happen based on, on the moves or the switches or whatever injury news comes out and stuff like that. So just wanted to kind of clear it there. Again, the draft guide. I'm trying to get that together with all these videos coming out. I'm thinking I'm going to drop the draft guide the week of the 14th. So it's the 14th to the 18th. I hope too many of you guys are not drafting before that. I'm going to try to get it out for the 14th, maybe the 15th, either the Monday or the Tuesday that week. I'll make a separate video for it completely that'll show you how to download it and how to get it. It's going to be like an e-PDF, like an e-magazine, basically. The top two, I think 250 rankings probably, and then broken up by positional rankings, tiers. I'll have a bunch of other stuff in there like sleepers and... I'll probably go team by team and put in like the best value on the team, best, uh, most upside, the highest ceiling, you know, things like that. So it'll be a lot of random stuff that'll be in there. I think you guys will really like it. You should be able to download it as a PDF version and then use, you know, print it out and use that as like a cheat sheet during your draft. If you want to do that, it'll be, it won't be too expensive. It'll probably be like four ninety nine or something like that. So I'm looking forward to that and I hope you guys are as well. Cause I put a lot of work into that bad boy. It's basically, you know, all my thoughts that you can find for free on the YouTube channel that I've been kind of spewing out this whole summer, but it's like a one-stop shop for it. So it kind of combines all the videos because it's a lot of content. Obviously, you're not going to be able to take in every video I put out. So if you want to get the one-stop shop of Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football Overview, that draft guide should have it all. I hope there's no technical difficulties. This is the first time I'm going to be doing it, and I have no idea how it's really going to work or how it's going to come out. But you do it, you live, you learn, and hopefully it 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 works. We're into round three, four. A lot of the running backs that I like are going off the board. And since we're going zero wide receiver, I'd still think about taking tight end. Since Gronk and Kelsey are both on the board, I would very likely go to one of them right now. If Gronk falls to me, I'm easily taking him at 29. I would honestly, in a real draft, I would debate going Gronk and then taking Kelsey as well as a flex play. But the running backs that are available right now are pretty questionable, especially compared to some of the wide receivers on the board. Like, I'd be okay taking Sammy Watkins here or something like that. But this is what I'm saying. It's hard. You can't go into the draft. Yeah, like, boom, Gronk. You can't go into the draft with a set strategy because, like, this this is a draft. I haven't seen anything like this before where so many guys are falling to me that I love. Like, I could have started off with Julio, A.J. Green, Gronk. Could arguably be the one-two at wide receiver and the number one at tight end. So those that's probably how I would have started out. But, you know, that's, that's just what I'm saying. Like, you can't go into a strategy. You got to really base your your picks based off value especially in the beginning of the draft because you have so many roster spots to fill and i understand if you hit like around nine or ten and you already have like six running backs on your team but you only have two wide receivers and you see another running back you like but you, you want to pass them over just because you need another wide receiver like i understand that it makes sense so we're gonna go with another running back here probably mccaffrey's off the board we have our pick between Mixon. i'm not taking gillisley here it's way too early 
I like Ty Mont. I also think it's a little early for him. Realistically, I would be picking, I think, between Kelsey and Sammy Watkins here, but I'm going to go with Joe Mixon because I love his upside. Ridiculous talent. Could easily return top five running back numbers. So now I have an incredible stable of running backs, right? Devonta Freeman, DeMarco Murray, Joe Mixon. I'm pretty set there. And this is where like zero wide receiver kind of, you know, goes out the door. Now you can kind of get to where you want to be and pick based on value regardless of position. So we'll wait till, you know, we'll wait till it gets to me the next pick. While we're here, I might as well uh, check out some roto blurbs and share my opinions on that. I did this in uh, one of the outlooks coming up too. I started off like the intro with reading up and down the roto blurbs and kind of giving you guys my opinion. I'm thinking about doing that during the season like week to week on, on the blurbs that come out and just kind of going through them, you know, because I haven't seen them before and just giving you my take. So let me know how if you kind of like like this part or you're just like, Nick, shut up. We don't want to hear you talk any more than you have to. Eight minutes in between picks to draft. Zico Elliott. Jerry Jones said he doesn't expect a suspension. That's nice. I don't know. We'll believe that when we see it. Tyler Lockett is back from PUP. Physically unable to perform list. This is going to be a really interesting situation because Tyler Lockett, if you remember, he was going like sixth or seventh round last year, right? People were really high on him. I was not. I, I hated him where he was going. Now he's like completely forgotten and he is an absolute beast. Much better real life player than than a fantasy player because he's so hit or miss. Good in best ball. He's, he's a great best ball pick right now because he's going so late and he's going to have those really big games. So he's someone you can get right now. I think his ADP is probably... 13th or 14th round. I'll check it out for you guys right now. Paul Richardson is someone you really, really need to keep an eye on too there. He might emerge as the number two in that Seahawks passing offense, which would be awesome because he's a crazy good talent. I mean, just injury. Yes, yeah, Tyler Lockett's going 149 overall, wide receiver 52. Back to my picks. Okay, so a lot of the running backs off the board. This is what I'm saying. We're into the fifth and sixth round and look at the value at wide receiver here compared to the running backs. Terry Kill's still on the board. If you guys saw my video, you know I love him. So I'm going to take Terry Kill here. I'll link that video up here. If you have any doubts about Terry Kill this year, go watch that video and you probably won't anymore. And then, you know, like Crabtree's great. Keenan Allen even, that upside. Crowder, Fitz. Oh, I love Fitzgerald here too. I don't know if I would take Fitz over Keenan Allen though. I think I'm going to take Fitz here. I love Fitz. Oh, it's not even my pick, huh? Good for me. But this is this is exactly what I'm saying. You see how I, I went with running backs, even though I those aren't the guys I wanted. We get to the wide receiver position and there's still so many good available wide receivers in this middle rounds. Like, look how many of those middle guys like here to here are, are wide receivers that you would be like really, really happy about having on your team. So I'm going to go Fitz here. My, my love for Fitz this year is pretty well documented on the channel. You know, he's finished the last few years is really high in PPR rankings and people are like, ah, he fades over the second half of the year. I was actually looking at splits for Fitzgerald because I, I know that. The thing is though, that's the second half of the year. He's not bad. It's just that the first half of the year, weeks one through eight, he's elite. He's averaging like 15 fantasy points a game, half PPR. From weeks nine to 17, though, over the last two seasons when people say he fades, he's still averaging 10 and a half half point PPR fantasy points a game. 10 and a half points per game, I looked at last year, would have made him wide receiver 20. It was either 22 or 23. So at his lowest point, at his, at his floor, if he played like he does over the last half of the season, the last two years... All season this year, you're still getting a wide receiver 22 or wide receiver 23, and he's getting drafted at like wide receiver 25 this year. So his floor is like so is so safe in that offense, especially without like Michael Floyd, who people were hyping up last season. He is like easily the main guy in that passing offense. Of course, David Johnson is going to eat up a lot of work, but Fitz is, is really that guy. We don't know what's going on with John Brown. He's he's having more hamstring issues. So realistically, Fitzgerald is like such. Such a safe play, and and people are really like not seeing him as, as a, a legit wide receiver too. I've been getting him at, at like in, as my fifth or sixth round pick in almost every draft I have. Even if I didn't go zero running backs, like I don't hate Terry Kill and Larry Fitzgerald as my one and two. You have an upside play and then a really safe play. It's a great combo. Wow, QBs are making a run here. So it's way too early for quarterbacks. There are starting running backs and starting wide receivers still on the board. And you're going to be taking a guy like Jameis Winston. Mariota. Fudge out of here. In a 10-team league, there's no sense of taking quarterbacks this early. There's always going to be guys on the waiver wire, and the 10th best quarterback is still going to be putting up probably like one fantasy point per game less than, than the three or four guys ahead of him. You guys know I love Amir and Bilal Powell and LeGarrette Blount, but I, I'm already pretty heavy at running back, even though, eh, let's go Bilal Powell. I saw something with Forte the other day. I think he was dealing with a hamstring injury. I, I think Powell's just a dynamite PPR play. He was 
like sixth or seventh in the league in, in pass catching, or it might even been like fourth for running backs. Even if the Jets are losing by like a thousand points, he is their main running back for catching passes. I'm going to go with Willie Sneed because I really like his upside. Oh, I like Terrell. I'm going Terrell Williams. He's my fudging boy this year. Every year I pick like one wide receiver to to be like my main breakout player. I get this like this gut feeling about a couple guys and I always choose one guy. In 2014 going into 2015, it was Allen Robinson. Last year, it was Marvin Jones. And after the first four games, I was like, bro, I'm on fire. I'm two for two. Two years in a row, I nailed it. Obviously, that didn't work out. But this year, Tyrell Williams like is that guy for me. If he doesn't finish as a top eight, like a, a certified wide receiver two that you're getting as like a wide receiver five price, I would be shocked. Let's go back to the Roto Blurbers. Lock it again. Great value. Paul Richardson, keep an eye. I think he beats out Jermaine Kirsch for wide receiver. Two duties. Jay Cutler to Miami. I would love to see that because it wouldn't be a drop off really if Cutler went there. Because if Ryan Tannehill's out, that's really going to hurt Devonta Parker and Kenny Stills. I think Jarvis Landry and uh, Jay Jay would be fine. They're both going to get their volume as short passers and, and obviously the main runner there. But if Jay Cutler is there, then they could still use that like vertical passing game. Corey Davis will be out at least a week. That's a big hit. You hate to see people with like serious hamstring injuries. Can't have rookies missing training camp time. This is really big. Um, you know, he was running with the first team as the X receiver. And now it looks like this is going to give way to Rashard Matthews, who if you watch my Titans outlook next week, I think it drops. I show a lot of love to my boy Rashard Matthews. I don't think people understand how good he was last year. I forget the exact stats, but I think it was after week five, he had 85 receiving yards or a touchdown in 10 of 12 games back in Miami. He was awesome. He just never got the opportunity. He played in six games in Miami that he saw six targets or more. In those six games, he had 105 receiving yards and or a touchdown in every single one of them. Like I, I think Rashard Matthews is like criminally underrated as a wide receiver. And that's why I think the Titans, I actually just laid down a hundred dollar bet on the Titans to win the Super Bowl this year. They are plus 4,000. I bet the Titans and I bet the Falcons. I threw a hundred on each of them. Falcons are 15 to one and the Titans are 40 to one. So that'd be fucking dope if, you know, if it was a Titans Falcons Super Bowl, which would suck because I'd almost have to root for the Titans. They'd make me a lot more money. I'd have to hedge the shit out of that bet. And then Simeon has taken a slight lead. Not surprised. If you watch my Broncos outlook, I already had him favored. He's a better quarterback than Paxton Lynch. Jason Verrett, they need him back. That Chargers secondary, their D-back, their cornerbacks are nice. Lions gave first team goal line reps to Zach Zenner over Amir Abdullah in practice on Friday. Okay, that's not good. But I also, that comes after report. Oops, speaking of. So we got Amir Abdullah, Tevin Coleman, Willis Sneed. Go Amir. I have so many running backs. That's a great thing. Like, you could still get... Uh, I'll probably go Willie Sneed here. If I get Willie Sneed, I love Garcon. I love Eric Decker. And these are, like, realistically guys that you're going to be able to get around this part of the draft. I would pick Danny with that here, but I need more depth of wide receiver. So, Zach Center gets the goal line reps. I honestly... I think they will split goal line reps. I don't know if Amir Abdul is going to be, like, the featured goal line guy there he is smaller than Zenner that being said I mean all reports this offseason have just been talking about how Amir is the featured back whether it's their team saying it whether it's their coach whether it's the website like he's gonna be getting his touches regardless and they get over the last couple of years their running backs have averaged like 135 catches each of the last two years so even if Riddick gets 75 there's still plenty of work for him in the passing game you know what he might not score more than five or six rushing touchdowns but with the amount of work he should get, he should be fine where you're getting him in drafts. Will Jones easing himself back in after offseason foot surgery. What else is fucking new? I'm sure we'll see this exact blurb every single week of the season. Michael Floyd has been playing with Vikings' top three receiver package. So that means, what, Laquan Treadwell's not playing with them? They still have that legal thing going on with Floyd. Coach Mike Zimmer said he's cutting Michael Floyd if they find out. He, he had like a .28 DUI a couple weeks ago, and he blamed it on like some tea that he was drinking. That's like a .28, I'm pretty sure, is like... 12 shots of tequila in an hour. You don't get that from T. But coach said he's cutting him if he's lying. So we'll see. Michael, this is his third team in the last year. It's never a good sign. So I'm not buying into this at all. Nelson Aguilar will be shocked if he doesn't play the slot. That's interesting because that might be pushing Jordan Matthews out. Because he's been playing the slot, Jordan Matthews. And now obviously they have Alshon Jeffrey as the one outside. And... Corey Smith, they also signed. So maybe it'll be a battle between Smith and Jordan Matthews on the outside if Aguilar wins. That starting spot in the slot. Either way, I don't I hate Aguilar. I hate Matthews. I hate all these mother suckers. The only piece of the passing game I want is Alshon Jeffrey or Zach Ertz, but only if it's a good price. 
So now is probably when I'd be looking at the quarterback. And I've said this before, if you're a late round quarterback guy, right? Something you want to do is you take a look at the list when your pick is up and you'd say like, how many of these guys would I be comfortable with as my starting quarterback? And I see like a decent amount, one, two, three, four, five, arguably like six left. I don't know if they'd get back to me, all of them. So I'd probably take one back. I'll take Derrick Henry here because I have DeMarco Murray. I don't want to take the handcuff there. I don't either. Because for the most part, Derrick Henry's ADP is like 80. So you're usually spending like a seventh round pick on him. But if I'm going to get him in the 11th round, I'm perfectly fine handcuffing DeMarco Murray with that. Because that's a real handcuff. Someone you can get late in the draft. But if I'm if I'm getting DeMarco Murray, I'm not using two of my top seven or eight picks on, on one backfield. And Derrick Henry's not good enough to have standalone value. Here, I already have a tight end. So normally I would take Jack Doyle if I didn't have a tight end here. So I guess I'll go with a quarterback. Andy Dalton, Derek Carr. I'm going to go Derek Carr here. It's like his weapons a lot more. Actually, I don't like his weapons more, but I like his, you know, the fact that he has an offensive line. Andy Dalton lost two huge pieces of the offensive line, so he might struggle. Plus, everyone on his team is fucking injury prone. Not really, just Ty I He needs Tyler Eifert to stay on the field. That's really what he needs. But I, I really like Dalton as a late round guy. I like any of these guys. It's full. Like, I've seen Derek Carr go as early as like pick 70, and now he drops to 112. So, it's the beauty of the late round quarterback. So we're getting the last few rounds and I still see a ton of guys that I like. Danny Woodhead, Jack Doyle, Kenny Britt, John Brown, even Adam Thielen, Keensey and Nunwa. I still can't believe he's going this late as like the clear cut wide receiver one in that offense. He's going to be, he's going to get 130 targets. Rob Kelly, he's still all the way down here. That's crazy to me. Tyler Lockett. Yes. Thomas Rawls, Eddie Fat Fudge Lacey is never going to Pass his weight test. All right, so I'll check back in with you guys after the rest of the draft wraps up. Quad. I think after we cut off, I took a Nunwa. So I took the Giants defense because they ended the year just on a tear. They looked really good over the second half. I was looking at some stats. I just tweeted this one out. From weeks one to six last year in the six games, they averaged two fantasy points per game. Then the defense really started coming together. That D-line really took over things. And from week seven through 17, they averaged 9.1 fantasy points per game. So they're a defense that's like being drafted at the end of the top 10 that I'm definitely looking at, as well as the Jaguars. They're a really young defense and they were hyped up last year because, you know, they took Jalen Ramsey, they took Miles Mack, but they're a very young defense. They're on the come up. You would look at what they did through free agency. They picked up arguably the best cornerback safety and D lineman on the market in uh, AJ Bowie, Calais Campbell, and Barry Church. So they're going to be a much improved defense, and they were already pretty good last year. I think they were top 12 in fantasy. They added Leonard Fournette, so obviously they are going to be running the ball a ton. The clock's going to be ticking off a lot, so they're not going to be letting up as many points. I think those are two of my my favorite later round defenses you could take if you're someone like me who picks them in the last-ish round. And as for kickers, I really don't give a shit about kickers. All I do is I pick a team that I think is going to score a lot of points, and I take their kicker. Not one of those guys that's going to go Justin Tucker- because he puts up a lot. Well, I think I think he's totally worth the pick if you want to reach for him a little more. My thing is, in my draft, anyone at pick after the 10th round can be held as a keeper for next year. So I don't want to use one of those like round 11, 12, or 13 picks on a kicker when there's guys there that I think could have like really big breakout upside um, for a keeper next year. So I always use the last two picks on kicker and defense. But that's the squad overall. Zero wide receiver, I think, worked out pretty well. I don't have like a guaranteed wide receiver one on my team. I think between the five guys there, though, I have about, I probably have like four wide receiver twos. And then I have two guaranteed RB1s and then three RBs that are very likely to hit RB2, if not better numbers. So I think this draft strategy actually worked out really well compared to the zero running back strategy that I did. I, this, this year is shaping up that I definitely want a running back, at least one running back in the top two picks. Because like I said, the wide receiver value is really really deep there in the middle round so that's gonna wrap up this video if you agree or disagree with any of my picks leave a comment down below go follow us on twitter go check out the blog go sign up for the newsletter you'll get discounts on any of the products that are on my website if you'd like to shop and uh go give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed subscribe to the channel if you're new and i'll see you all next time peace